So now we're going to have a look at uh, Markov chains um, and transition matrices. Um, and we're going to keep this uh, more to do with the matrices themselves and not really look at the graph theory side of things um, in case uh, that's coming up for you later in the course. Now, um, it's easiest to just get into a, an example with Markov chains. And, um, but what they are in general is um, some kind of situation that um, moves along in discrete steps uh, as an iterative process where uh, people or things or objects may move uh, between different options at the end of each step, okay, um, which will see, may seem quite vague, so let's get into this example. Um, now, uh, let's say an international school has uh, 140 teachers and uh, they put them, uh, they house them in three different apartment buildings. Okay, we've got the acorn, the birch, and the cedar, um, big apartment buildings. Um, and uh, the teachers can move uh, freely at the end of each year if they want to change buildings. Now, um, it is seen that uh, at the end of each year, 5% of the people in building A move to building B. 7% move to C. 9% of people in the birch move to the acorn, okay, and 11% move to the cedar. 6% um, of C move to A, 3% of C move to B. Okay, now implied in each of those that you may have to figure out yourself is that 88% of people stay in B, if they're in B. Okay, 80%, uh, sorry, 88% stay in A if they're in A, 80% stay in B if they're in B, and what's that, 91% would stay. Okay, so that could be something you would have to work out yourself, um, just from understanding the context of the question. Now, having those three long bullet points um, isn't particularly helpful, um, and but if we if instead we put it into a matrix, then we can see that we are able to do lots of things with it. Okay, so what how this is going to work is that um, at the top here, we have from A, B, and C in the current year, and then next year, you'll be in A, B, and C uh, with these probabilities here. Okay, so we read this 0 0.05 as there's a 5% chance that if you were in A, you will be in B next year. Um, as all of these uh, bits of information told us at the start anyway. Okay, so this is just a way of presenting it, and because it's uh, presented like this, that means that every column should add up to one. Okay, because after all, these are kind of probabilities, and within each column, you have every option, should, so that should add up to one. Now, this is a transition matrix. Okay, transition matrix, um, called that because those are the probabilities of transitioning between A, B, and C between each step, between each discrete step, between each iteration. Um, and we can do things straight from here, actually, before being given any further bits of information. Okay, we can actually find a steady state matrix from this. Okay, if I do t to the sum high power on my calculator, um, and there are maybe other ways of doing this as well, but um, we see, well, let's see what we get. Okay, what well, are, uh, when we multiply t by itself, Okay, what we're doing is going from one year to the next, to the next, to the next, okay? And even though 100 years won't make sense in this scenario, um, this is 
basically the proportions that we'll see in a hundred years. And what we start to actually see is the same thing in every column. Okay, um, and so that's interesting because whether you're in A, B, or C in the previous year, there's a 36.0% chance of being in A, and then 16.2% chance of being in B, 47.8% chance of being in C the next year. Okay, and what's really uh, special about this matrix is that if you have these proportions of people in each um, in each building, and you take five percent of them, and you move um, from A to B, take seven percent of the A's, and you move them to C, you do all those moves. What you'll actually get is the exact same proportions the next year. Okay, and that is why we call it the steady state. This these are the proportions. Uh, that this situation kind of settles into in the long term. Okay, so we can say in the long term, 47.8% of teachers will be living in C in any given year. Okay. Now, the other way that they can kind of present these questions is to give it, not in terms of proportions, but in terms of actual numbers of people or objects or things. Um, such as this situation here, where this year 45 teachers are in A, 38 in B, 57 in C. Okay, so we take our transition matrix and we can multiply it by these three numbers presented in a column vector. Okay, because when we multiply a 3 by 3 um, by a 3 by 1, then um, to multiply these by hand, you would be doing this 0 0.88 times 45, 0 0.09 times 38, okay, adding those all together to get um, this top number here, which I can just do on my calculator, and I would get 49.3, okay. Now that, those calculations there are exactly the same thing as saying, well, how do I know how many people will be in A in the next year? Well, it's 88% of the 45 that are already in A, 9% of the 38 that are in B, and 6% of the 57 that are in C, um, which is, if you look at these, what I've marked in pink there, uh, that is the exact calculation I'm doing when just naturally doing matrix multiplication and that's why this transition matrix works um, to tell me how many will be in each in the next year um, and just realize it's not 49.3 sorry that's 46.4 uh, um, it's 46.4 uh, my calculator is telling me these three numbers when I just plug in that multiplication. Okay, and I can keep multiplying by the transition matrix uh, to get the next year, the next year, the next. Okay, and repeated multiplication is obviously, uh, ex we use exponents. So if I want to see uh, how many teachers will be in each building in five years, uh, I multiply it by five. Okay, and the notation we use here is that I'm doing t to the power of 5 times s0, my initial state, and I'll get s5. Okay, and here I get 49.3, 26.6, 64.0, okay, and that doesn't add up to 140 just because of uh, rounding anomalies there, uh, but that's fine. and. Yeah, if we're talking about people, and the question was how many would you expect to be in the acorn in five years' time, then we would say 49. We would round to an integer number of people, obviously. Uh, now, we can then talk about steady state matters again here um, by asking something like how many uh, people will be in each building in the long term. Okay, so... 
I again can raise it to a large power, even though 100 again doesn't actually make sense here. Okay, no teachers will be at the school for 100 years. Okay, but if I just do this on my calculator, I get my long term, a steady state, my number of people that would be in each building in the long term, maybe 20, 30 years. Um, well, if you did it to the power of 20 or 30, you might get slightly different decimals that may, may have not settled into its steady state yet. Um, but we start to get the, the, the sense of where it would settle. Okay, 50 in A, 23 maybe in B, and 67 in building C, the cedar. All right, um, and finally, what we can also say here is that, well, yes, t to the power of 100 times s0 would give us, well, s100, which is approximately equal to the steady state, and we can call that s. Okay, but that's a bit clunky. Um, what's much nicer is, as we said before, the steady state, when multiplied by the transition matrix, stays the same. Okay, it's now just in that state, it's steady. Okay, so we can say that when we multiply the transition matrix by S, I should get S. Okay, and that is more of a definition of the steady state. And that's actually something you could use algebraically if they kind of reversed the question and gave you some kind of unknown elsewhere and told you the steady state maybe. Um, that is something to note because that would be a, a trickier way of asking a question about Markov chains, okay? And uh, that about covers it, okay? Um, how to find steady states, how to find proportions or numbers uh, in a certain number of steps, okay? This doesn't have to be years, could be days, could be just, it could not be time, it could be steps themselves. Okay, great.